Good morning, champions. This is FBI Art from America. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Everybody close your eyes and say these words. Holy Spirit, be with me today. Baptize me with your fire, fire, fire. Now take three deep breaths. Why do I want to start that message out today? Because I'm going to give you an important message today that we need the Holy Spirit to walk with us, to feel his presence, to know that he is going to uh, 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 loose some things in you today, give you rebar in your back. The word comforter, uh, one of the words of the comforter in the old English word in the Bible in, in, uh, in, uh, John uh, 16, where it says the Holy Spirit is your comforter. The comfort he does, he makes you feel good. He, he does what he is, his presence. But he also gives you strength. He puts rebar in your back. That is what the old English word. And, and the word comforter, the Holy Spirit represents uh, power, right? Power or strength. Strength to go through difficult situations. Strength to uh, defy temptation. Uh, strength to stay in the battle when you want to run. The comforter is so important to give you rebar in your back. Say, I, I got the I got the rebar in my back. I got the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important to listen to this message. And the name of this message is, I knew you would come back. Now, we're going to talk today about uh, something that's uh, really marked that I think is great as a Christian is uh, staying committed. Never, ever, ever quitting. Good man gets up seven times. Not a perfect man. God does not say a good, a uh, perfect man is someone that uh, never commits a sin. He says the man that gets up and repents and gets back up. And that's why he said David is a man after his own heart. David was not a sinless man, but man, David always came back and repented in Psalms 51. He says, Lord, I repent. Uh, you look at that. David was a repenting man. And that's what God says the man of his heart. Not a perfect man. All, all you perfect men up there, you're nothing but hypocrites because you're not perfect. <laughs> you just like to everybody think you're perfect. We're not perfect. But a man that never, ever quits is a mark of a Christian to me. That I don't care how many times you fall down. So we want to stay and talk about being committed today. And being committed today, we're going to need the Holy Ghost to do this. So we're going to ask the Holy Ghost to help us. And that's the secret of being committed and staying on fire for all your life. I'm 75 and I'm on fire, fire, fire right now because I have the Holy Spirit. And he has made me strong. If you want to reach your highest potential in your life, you're going to have to learn to, learn to stay committed. Uh, you're going to have to make committed when it's not really easy to do. That's where most people get in. Stay committed to your marriages. Stay committed to your church. Stay committed to your friends. Uh, people, though, uh, pastors and friends and, uh, uh, and your marriages, we, don't, we, we blow it sometimes. We, we don't always say the right things. People don't always do the things that I want them to do. Sometimes they do things I don't think are good. But a committed person stays with a person all the time. You have to learn to be a committed person. If your pastor offends you, so what? Get back. Give him some grace. God wants to uh, give you some grace too. If he, if he dumped you every time that you, that you screwed up, he, you, you'd be going to hell. No, God loves you and, and he's committed to you. He's, he took you for better or worse. To death do you part. <laughs> he was in a covenant with you. Just like you do a marriage. He doesn't get a get away from you because you're not. He is committed. It says to uh, in Isaiah 50, listen to this. This is how committed God is. And this is Jesus going to the cross in Isaiah 50. And he says to this, says to uh, the Lord in Isaiah 50 verse 7. I'm going to read verse 6 first. I gave my back to the smiters and my, cheek, my cheeks to them that plucked off my hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. 
This is Jesus on the cross. Verse 7 says, The Lord will help me. Therefore, I will not be confounded. Therefore, I will set my face like flint. Set my face like flint. This is committed. And I know I shall not be ashamed. It was a tough thing to go through the cross. But Jesus, through all his life, he was committed. He set his mind like flint. He set his, that's a Christian, set your mind like flint. Before the problem comes, this is how you're going to act when the problem comes. When the devil attacks you, you're going to say, this is how I'm going to be. I will not back out. I will be this way. And you start saying this by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, assist me in my life. Say this, Holy Spirit, help me. You got to stay committed in the long haul. Sometimes in marriages, it, it just doesn't seem to work out. Uh, you know, I've been married 52 years, champions. You know, it, it's like time. There was times in my wife and my life that my wife she had a, a illness, a thyroid out, and and she went wacko for like 10 years. And I didn't know that. I thought she was just getting mean. <laughs> but I was committed. You understand, I was committed all the time. It didn't matter to me how she acted because God told me, he said, go tell your, buy your wife a wedding ring. And, but the 10 years before that, I had kind of given up on my marriage and God restored me back because I didn't act that great. And now she had her season where she was going wacko and she put up with me when I was wacko because <laughs> she was committed to me. And then I put up with her when she was crazy. And, but I looked at her and I said, you know, I know that she loves me. How did I know she loves me? Because she stayed with me. She might have called me every stinking name in the book. You devil, you, you crazy man, you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I'm going to get a lawyer, I'm going to divorce you. But I would say to her, I would say to her, look, honey. I'm the best thing ever happened to you, girl. And you wouldn't be that stupid to leave me. <laughs> and that would make her go crazy wild. But then I would say to her, you're the best thing ever happened to me too. God put you with me. You are my prize. Now, what do I mean by a prize? And I said, nobody steals my prize. And I, I've told you this before, is that my in my marriage and, and I live First Samuel 17, where David was going to fight Goliath, he said, what will be given to the man who kills Goliath? And they said, you're going to not pay any taxes and you get the king's daughter, you get to marry her. And he said, give me that guy, give me that giant. I'm going to take him out because he set his mind on the prize, on the prize, not the problem, not the problem. And he decided to go get his prize. And Goliath was as big as he was. Everybody was scared of him because they were looking at the problem. D G David was looking at the prize. So I look at my wife. I said, she's my prize. Nobody's going to steal me. These. So the problems we had did not matter to me because I knew she was my prize. And my wife's this awesome lady. Awesome lady. Oh, man, she's awesome. <laughs> and she's good looking, too. <laughs> Yeah, she's a fine chick, man. I love her. But we had to, I had to stick to it. I had to commit myself to her to, because she was my prize. I was going to stay with her no matter how she treated me. I used to tell her, uh, I used to hide the 38 at night for those years because she, that was my gun in the house. And I'd hide it because I thought she was so mad at me, she's going to shoot me. <laughs> But but I used to tell her, I says, I love you, and I will never leave you or forsake you. And I don't care how, how mean you get to me. You, 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 you understand this. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. Oh, that would make her mad too. But, but what happened, I had the joy of the Lord, even though when she's called me all these names. A lot of people get upset because the people call you names. I didn't because I realized she loved me, even though she was saying all sorts of bad things about me, but I knew she loved me. She committed to me. And sometimes your commitment, you, I just remember uh, you had these mental things going on, the thyroid out and going, her hormones were going wacko. She would say these things, but I knew she didn't mean them. So they didn't hurt me. I just, the demons were just giving her uh, bad words to say about me, but I wasn't her. <laughs> 
But so you've got to look at problems. You don't get mad at people because they they don't uh, see all the right things. Hey, pe- good people blow it. You understand that. And, and your pastor's going to blow it. Your, your wife's going to blow it. Your friends are going to blow it. But don't get so, uh, so upset with them because they love God. And you be a faithful friend even when it costs you. God says, I swear to you even to my own hurt. I'll swear by my own hurt. That means sometimes when you have your word, you give your word to stay with somebody or commit to somebody, it's going to cost you some pain. You can, you'll know you're really good friends. Or you know you're not your fair weather friends when they stay with you in the bad times, not just the good times. If they're staying with you just in the good times, they're, 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 and they leave you there, they're just flaky friends. Everybody likes you when you're doing good. You'll never know this. When you make commitments, you stay with people. You love people. And you just go, go about being good to them. Uh, let me tell you this story. This guy, he was in uh, World War II. Him and his best friend went, went to uh, Germany and went to war together in the army. And they were fighting against the Nazis. And they were in battles. And they'd been friends all their life. Battle. And one time they heard the retreat blow. So they got up and they started... Uh, running back. All of a sudden, his friend realized that his good his other friend wasn't with him. And so he went to this commanding officer, can I go back and go back and get my friend? He's not here. And the commanding officer said, no, you can't. That would be suicide. You cannot drive back there, go back there. That's a waste of time. The friend turned around all of a sudden and just ran back into the fire and ran back in there. He found his friend the officer saw him coming back out. His commanding officer saw him coming back out, carrying his friend in his lifeless body. Commanding officer said, I told you not to go back there. That was suicide. I knew he would be dead already. And the man said to him, says to the commanding officer, no, he was not dead. When I got to him, he was alive. And the, the last words he said, I knew you would come back for me. I knew you would come back for me. And then he died. You want to be that type of friend in your life. You want to be that type of friend to come back. It's going to cost you pain. It may cost you difficulty. But you, as a Christian, you want to be that way. And you're going to need the Holy Spirit to be that way as a Christian. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Help me to be strong. Help me be a committed person. Strengthen me with your fire, fire, fire. Make me a man like Jesus. Make me set my mind like Flint. Guys, the whole message today is learning to stay uh, committed to God and committed to your marriage, committed to your church, and be a committed person. Here's how Christianity works. You guys don't see me right now, but uh, if I was eating a candy bar, and I say, oh, this, uh, this candy bar really tastes good. This is really good. This is awesome. This feels really, really, really good. But Galatians 6 says, whatever you sow, you shall reap. Let me read it for you. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. Now, if that's, the, if that's true, and in do, do not get weary of doing good, because in due season, in due season, you shall reap. Let me read it directly. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, he shall reap. For he soweth in the flesh, he sh- the, she- the flesh shall reap corruption. But he soweth in the spirit, he shall reap everlasting life. Let us not be do it, let us get weary doing, doing well. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The word if we faint not. That's what helps, uh, knocks out a lot of Christians of being faithful, uh, of being uh, consistent, is they faint out. They get weary in doing good. I, I've eaten this candy bar, and it feels good. I like it. I enjoy it. Hey, it feels good. I don't feel anything. But if I get up and I start eating every meal, I started eating candy bars every day, not healthy food, sooner or later, later and later and later, I'm going to sow corruption in my flesh, am I not? But I won't see it for quite a while. It's tasting good. The more junk food I eat, sooner or later, I'm sowing corruption in my body. The more junk I eat, uh, but it feels good going in. 
but in, 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 in time, it reaps corruption in my body, right? Well, that's the same thing in the spirit world. If you do not stay faithful, if you run with the devil, you may be doing real good. You may be doing drugs. You may be cheating on your wife. You may be having sex outside of marriages. You, you, you may think the Bible is a bunch of crud because it doesn't affect you right away. God does not strike you dead. You go out and have an affair. God doesn't strike you dead with a lightning bolt. And you go, oh, man, I am just knocked out. You know, uh, I don't have to be faithful to my wife. Nothing happened. It's good. I got away with it. And you keep going. And you keep going. Sooner or later, your marriage breaks up. You start being destroyed. Your kids go on. Kids go up to the witch doctor. They think Christianity. And your life becomes a shamble. It always works. It's so like, but if you sow unto the spirit in due season, you will reap. You stay, I'm now married 52 years. I never got a divorce. Even though I, I felt like I wanted to get a divorce, I never got a divorce because I was convinced of it. I stayed. The reason I've done so well in life, I can take more pain than most people. I can take more pain because I want to win. When I was a young man, I used to want to be a, a fighter. But when I, I used, to, this used to be a fighter named Carmen Basilio. Well, he won every fight. But he would be beat up to just terrible. His face would be looked like a, a meat claver in these boxing matches. But he always won. And I had made up my mind, it's why I'm a Christian, is that I don't care how much pain things cost me. I, I really don't, you know. I really don't care about that because I care about winning. And if you're a Christian, if you stay with God, you win. If you go over it and you get weary and you stop doing it, you get discouraged and you quit. And when you quit, you lose. You become a loser. At the end of the 15th round, I'm going to be standing on the head of the devil. I don't care how bloody he gets me. I am going to be standing on his head. And you are too. Because Christianity, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted. For they shall see God. Say, I'm going to see God. I don't care how much persecuted. I am going to be on fire, fire, fire. Because the Holy Spirit lives in me. He is my strength. He is my life. He is my fire. And he's going to make me strong. He's going to give me the power to overcome the enemy, to stay committed. Cannot tell you Christianity is going to just be all rosy for you. But I can tell you for sure. I can guarantee you, because I have lived this out for 40 some years. I have been a Christian that long, and, and I know that, that if you stay with Christ, you win. You don't go and stay with Christ. Out of the 47 years, I watch people lose. I, am, I hate losing. I hate losing. I hate losing. You understand that? You know why? Because I'm a Christian. God does not lose. God does not lose. He whips the devil every time. It looks like the devil's winning a lot of times, but God always comes in and whacks him. He does never, ever lose. And you have to get that in your mind. The Christianity is, is, is something you're going to do. Say, say this. I'm going to be the kind of friend that people say, I knew you would come back. I am committed to you, God. I love you, Jesus. I give you my life. I will serve you for better or worse all my life. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. I love you, Holy Spirit. Fire, fire, fire. Hey, guys, I got to go. I love you. Blessings on you. Stay committed. Keep yourself fired up. Do not ever dream of quitting. Never, ever quit. And Luke 18, Jesus said, men ought to pray and never, ever quit. See you, champions.